This is called Subway Ethics. You are civilized. Follow the rules. Then one day, it happens to you. The train is coming. The metro card machines don't work. The subway attendant says he can't help you. You have to make a 3.30 appointment and have no cash. It suddenly enters your mind, then your body. Before you know it, you jump the turnstile. <laughs> dedicated to all the doctors in the world. Which is worse? You're walking down the street the night before surgery and a 40 pound mutt with a muzzle lunges into your chest. But the surgeon shows up late so you were hospitalized over the weekend. Or is it the nausea, the lower back pain, the constant beeping of unanswered calls at the nurse's station, or the two residents who visit at 6 a.m. who tell you to talk to the nurse, who tells you to talk to them, and you wonder, who are these people? Where is the doctor? Did he really perform the surgery? <laughs> this is my way of getting back. And just to note, uh, not sure of this crowd, DSM is a diagnostic statistical manual that shrinks use to diagnose you. How to kill a water bug. Look, there's a water bug on the carpet. I shout to my therapist, I can kill it. Do you have insect repellent or a large book? She hands me the DSM-5. <laughs> Quietly, I approach the unwanted visitor, drop the manual over the bug, and step on it. Triumphantly, I wipe the blue cover with the tissue and return to my seat. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> but I wasn't trying to okay. Thoughts on paper. Paper mate. Wish I had one. Paper box. Couldn't find my way out. Paper towels. In my family, paper towels were rationed. You had to know when to use a paper towel and when to use a rag. Paper weight. A friend gave me an expensive Venetian glass paper weight. A work of art, she said. Aquamarine with gold filamiori inlay. I kept, it kept my bills from blowing away. <laughs> Newspaper. I used to buy the New York Times every day, then Tuesday and Thursday through Sunday, later Friday and Sunday, finally Friday. Now I read 10 articles on my phone. I miss folding paper into quarters and reading it on the subway. <laughs> paper mache. My father helped me build a paper mache zebra for the school art fair. We stayed up all night pasting strips of newspaper around a broom. When dry, we coated it with black and white house paint. Zebra was the size of a small horse, too big for the car. My brother and I carried her to school. Everyone was impressed. When the fair was over, I brought Zebra home. Four months later, we moved to Wisconsin. She arrived at our new house with a broken leg. Uh, my father patched her up, but she didn't survive the move to Michigan. Paper plates. I was between jobs and between apartments. There were only two places I could afford. One was owned by a woman named A, and the other by a woman named Z. A lived in Manhattan, Z lived in the Bronx, I did, A did not have a sense of humor. Z laughed all the time. I preferred Z, but she had two cats, so I roomed with A, who kept kosher. A's closets were filled with giant-sized packages of toilet paper, paper plates, cups, and at least 100 travel-sized containers of carry lotion, two sinks, two sets of dishes, and flatware. I lived in constant fear of placing the wrong plate in the wrong sink, or the right plate in the wrong sink. To avoid conflict, 
I ate on paper plates. <laughs> so did A. <laughs> term paper. I come to terms. Paper. Remember when we used to write on paper? A flow of ink on the page, a form of ecstasy. Uh -huh. That was for post um, blank first uh, pomp. This is called Paris at 18. Something to remember. Très français. I buy Christian Dior bikinis. Beige, translucent, with a bow. On the way to our sea, I place them in my purse, glide through customs onto the plane. When no one's looking, I remove my panties and slip on the Christian Dior's stiff, itchy lace. At home, I wash them in downy, beat them with a rock, hide <laughs> them in my lingerie drawer for the next 25 years. <laughs> A change of tune here. <laughs> Another true story. Petals, I only write true stories. Petals in my pockets. An orange triangle falls from the sky. I try to catch. It slips away like a butterfly with no wings. Two roses clipped. I rescue from the subway floor. Soft red petals. Place them in my pockets, my secret. Um, um, this is now, I'm going to read Roommates, which is also dedicated to all the roommates in the world. And I just want to say before I read this, I have a great roommate right now. No one has a roommate. Well, it's early in the game, but. <laughs> roommates. <laughs> Not everyone can. Roommates. Nine roommates in 11 years. Looking for another roommate was a drag. What could I do? I opened my Mac, clicked on my roommate file, and posted my ad on Craigslist. Young women looking to save money who had never stepped foot outside of Manhattan came to Astoria in droves. They arrived early when it was still light. It's cute different. Looks nothing like Manhattan. How safe is it? Where's the grocery store? One woman asked to see the laundry room that was located in the basement. It was early evening and the gold, cold gray cinder block room was empty. I could see that she was stream, extremely uncomfortable when she broke out in a cold Manhattan sweat. <laughs> Another came with a typed list of questions and proceeded to interrogate me. Is it safe, she asked for the third time. As I walked her to the corner, the homeless man who sits in front of the laundromat approached her. Hey, sweetie, you want to get married? I got food stamps. <laughs> Francesca rescheduled three times. She was young, large, and luscious. The redhead spent two hours on my maroon sofa debriefing me. She was an assistant at a downtown real estate firm, a plus-size model who was writing a book, making radio appearances, and recently selected to star in a reality TV show. Don't be surprised when you see ads of my face plastered all over the subway. <laughs> I knew I would find someone. Evening spent at home, waiting, cleaning, removing my present roommate's garbage bags of clothing and hiding them, schlepping her boxes and repeating the same questions over and over was driving me nuts. Do you work full time? Have you lived with roommates before? Do you have a boyfriend or a partner? Do you own a TV? If so, would you mind watching it in your own bedroom? That night, Lola called. Listen, I'm 52. I work full time and I'm a graduate student. I hope the age isn't a problem because I'm really sick of being rejected by 20 year olds. <laughs> Could it be true? We made an appointment for that evening Lola arrived an hour late. She had a great smile and a mass of beautiful curly bronze hair. 
Unlike the others, she headed directly to the kitchen, dropped her bags, and began to talk. We bonded immediately. We both loved Tom Wolfe, Salvador Dali, and had seen Death of a Salesman with George C. Scott. We spoke at length before she asked to see the bedroom. It's perfect. She spent a half hour drawing diagrams and describing how she would furnish it. This was it, roommate at first sight. I was about to pop the question when she asked if she could charge her phone. I'm sorry, she said. I love your apartment, and I really enjoyed meeting you. But I made this other appointment earlier and must go. I'll be in touch soon. I felt betrayed. <laughs> I spent two hours with this woman and thought I had a catch. I liked her, but who the hell looks at apartments at 10 p.m. on a Wednesday night? The next day she called when I was interviewing someone else. I'm in the neighborhood. Can I stop by with my best friend? Can you make it at 7.45? Yes, she said. Are you sure, I asked. She arrived at 7.45 on the dot. Instead of her friend, she brought her mother, Dominique. When Dominique spoke to me in broken English, Lola exploded. Mommy, kayate, I told you not to talk. <laughs> Lola opened every kitchen cabinet. Oh, she looked in the refrigerator and under the sink. With no warning, she pulled out her camera to photograph the apartment. You can photograph the bedroom, I said, but that's it. She tested each window, knocked on the walls, measured the room from corner to corner. I'd like to have the room painted, the ceiling scraped, and I want the closet next to my bedroom. The room will be painted, I replied, but the closet is mine. We returned to the kitchen, and she began calculating her finances out loud. So, Lola, what do you say? I love it, but I wasn't expecting to find a place so soon. I have to pay my school tuition this week. They don't have enough money to cover the rent and security. How much is it? She was stalling. <coughs> you only have to pay the security deposit, and you could pay the rent when you move in. Can I give it to you next Friday? Lola, you have been here twice for hours. Do you want to move in? I can't wait. If someone comes along, I need to rent it. She did a few more calculations. Let me figure out a few things, and I promise I'll call you tomorrow morning. The next day, I found a roommate. Everything is hunky-dory. We were in the honeymoon stage. In a few weeks, she will stop cleaning the apartment. In a year or so, she will find a boyfriend or go to graduate school or want her own apartment. Yes, you do have to kiss 100 frogs to find a roommate. <laughs> My advice, keep kissing and ask the essential questions. If you don't, you will find out anyway. Are you a Republican? Do you own a boa constrictor? Do you watch American Idol? Do you sing along? Thank you.